What's up, my friends? Welcome back to The Witcher. Now that we are officially done with Witcher 1 and in the process of going to Witcher 2, I want to do a kind of just want to talk about The Witcher, sit back, kick back, enjoy the uh, little bit of time, well, the lot of bit of time that we uh, spent in The Witcher, and just talk about each chapter, talk about what happened, and then paved the way for us to Witcher 2 so we can sit here and just reflect on all the great things that happened in the game like I'm just gonna come out and say it the Witcher 1 was probably one of the best games I've ever played and that's crazy because the way people were reviewing the Witcher 1 and not just reviewing just the way people were even just talking about the Witcher 1 they were just saying that you know because the Witcher 3 has gotten such a big reputation especially nowadays and even before when it first came out, it's it's marked as like the best RPG ever made. And that was in what, 2015? And because of the success of that game, it was bringing on a lot of people that were just new to the series and then wanted to just start The Witcher or just play The Witcher 3. And a lot of recommendations were saying, you know, just go wait to write The Witcher 3. Or if you don't like older games, just go to Witcher 2 and then go to Witcher 3. Like, you don't need to play the first one. I'm telling you, I think them people that, that just skip it are just doing themselves a great disservice because I know from experience that I like to play games that I will not do a let's play of a game if it's the third installment, the second installment. I always have to start where it first began to the end. And not only that, like, I did read the books. Now, I haven't... <laughs> I'm gonna say that I, uh... I feel sorry for a lot of the people that actually played The Witcher 1 and had to wait many years. I've done that with multiple games. I've been gaming for a long time, so I know the feeling of just wanting to jump into the next one and not being able to back in the day. And I'm, I'm very happy that I went ahead and just went black on all The Witcher stuff and just didn't see any spoilers over the years. And I just read all the books. And now from the books, I jumped into the first one. Then we're going to jump into the second one, the third one. And it's all blind. So it's going to be great. It's going to be a one hell of an experience from beginning to end, and there's going to be no breaks at all in between. So, now, The Witcher 1 was, like I said, it, it far exceeded my expectations. It was just a great classic RPG, man. The quest in this game was just amazing. Like, everything felt like it had an outcome. Even if it was a side quest, it all felt really good. It didn't just feel like fetch quests. There was a few that just was... All right, I guess. Um, I really enjoyed the um, the start of the first quest. What was it called? The start of the um, the monster hunting one, the one where the hunts master just told you about two monsters in an area, and it kind of didn't update your journal, and you had to just go and do it. I thought that was really unique compared to. Uh, games nowadays where they kind of just mark it on your map and you go to it it's just so easy that's very unique i know it didn't update the journal the whole time you just had to really listen to it and just i don't know it was just really really awesome it was unique and it was nice especially compared to nowadays a lot of quests like i said are just kind of you look and read the journal and then you go to it and i can really appreciate that at first i was like ah eh, this why would they do that you know but that's the spoiled gamer in me at times you know but I really did enjoy that quest. Now, with the whole start of it all, I started off with, like, Geralt, you know, losing his memory. And, which is interesting because, like, what, where did he, where did Geralt come out of? Because he was running in Kaer Morhen, and there was a big storm. I remember Askel talking about a big storm. Something about Night Jars as well, because Night Jars is like an omen of... It's an omen of something. I can't remember what exactly they are. But there's some kind of an omen. And then Geralt appears with no memory. Like, the way the books left off, Geralt and Yennefer was leaving in a boat. That's when um, it was supposedly the death of Geralt, pretty much. It wasn't confirmed, obviously, but... The way the books ended, the way the games 
began is quite interesting because there's there's just a point of there's nothing there like you don't know what happened when Siri and all the rest of Geralt's spirit friends that came back to put them onto a boat you don't really know what happened so the game picked up really freaking awesome at that point of just they could have just did anything with it Geralt no memory and boom I mean I think they did great with it you know and what they actually did and then we have the um the Care More in battle in the beginning was really cool. The whole thing with the decision with Triss to help Triss over um, the Witchers was really cool. It set the pace of like, okay, it's really time to uh, start thinking about quests here and start thinking about stuff before we make the decision. And I really enjoyed the whole beginning of Care Morin. Um, Leaving Kaer Morn and going to Chapter 1. Chapter 1 was mysterious. Like the whole beast thing. If you look back at all the chapters, Chapter 1 and probably Chapter 4 was the ones that made you really feel like a witcher. I, you know, Chapter 4 maybe, but Chapter 1 was really the one that made you fully feel like a witcher because the... Um, the whole beast situation, how it was attacking the uh, people around the outskirts and such. And it was a curse, kind of. And it was so mysterious because you had to sit there and you had to... Uh, I don't know, you had to find out information on the beast and then tell you had to work for these shady people to try to get more information on the beast, to try to get rid of the beast and find out why the beast was even there. It was just really awesome. And the whole, the first uh, involvement we had with the Scoia'tael there was, was obviously, I didn't think it was going to be that big of a choice. And that ended up being a big choice leading into chapter two. Now, chapter one was just, it was just really a, a great introduction to the game. And a good way of um, kind of getting you in the mode of stuff. Now, I didn't really care for the Reverend. I mean, I, we, we got our uh, revenge on him, obviously. I mean, who does care for the Reverend? The whole situation with the Reverend and the three other people was just... The shit that they did was severe and it made you show how like mature of an RPG the game actually is compared to... Um, just cookie cutter type of stuff. It was, it was just really, really mature. The whole situation with, what's her name, Abigail, just felt like it was just not a good idea to just turn on her and turn her over to them. It was literally just a lesser evil. You were picking the lesser evil. And then she turned up being a decent character towards then. And she even helped us in the uh, the icy plains at the end. So it was really cool. Uh, meeting Zoltan there was awesome. The whole situation with Shani. Shani was up in the air here in this. Like, I'm not going to say she felt like she was thrown into the game. But kind of, she did. Kind of. Because her, like, involvement after you tell her that... Well, what, in Chapter 2? After you tell her that, you know, you're going to stay with Triss or help... Or well, it might have been Chapter 3, I can't remember. It was one of the chapters... Yeah, it was 3. When you pretty much picked Triss over her. After that, Shani was kind of just non-existent. And even at the end of the game, I was hoping for a quest with Shani there. And it was just nothing. So, Chapter 1 was really awesome. I, I did enjoy it. And then, Chapter 2, we had the whole situation with... Trying to find Salamandra somehow. And any information we can find on Salamandra. And then we lead into this... Goose chase type of detective thing going on here. And Chapter 2, let me tell you something, Chapter 2 had the best characters in it. I'm still going to always remember Vincent, Taller, even Kalkstein was really awesome in Chapter 2. With the whole tower situation, the detective was mysterious and awesome. The whole situation with Coleman, that was crazy because from what I'm aware, Coleman can be killed off really easy. Then you would lose all that information. Consider you have to side with Aaron Brog in the first one the first chapter to actually keep Coleman alive. If you side with the Scoia'tael like we did and go to Coleman right away, he dies. 
or Coleman, if you go to the uh, detective right away, Coleman is just done. So you lose out on all of them quests and all them information to help you um, find out that Vincent pretty much was not guilty. And the whole situation with the te detective thing, the uh, autopsy, and then Azar Javed doing the um, masquerade as old, uh, what's that guy's name? I called him Vincent and Raymond. I got just mixed their names up the whole damn time. Um, that was really cool. It was really, I'm going to catch you off guard type of stuff. Because once I actually found that out, I was just dumbfounded. And that's when the game really started picking up. Like it picked up from the beginning. Like you knew your um, task and you knew how dire the task was. But it really picked up in the second chapter, man. And then sadly, the whole thing with Siegfried in the beginning, he seemed like a decent character, you know. And then obviously his end was just terrible. And I know in the second chapter, I was starting to get weary of the uh, Order of the Flaming Rose because the whole merchant person that kept saying he doesn't know us or whatever and then the whole situation with the uh dwarven merchant there that humans end up taking his business so i was a little weary of, about them that whole time and it kind of just i don't know kind of just led up to uh obviously the end what we know about the order so it was pretty cool and then a swamp's the Swamps Intel was really awesome. I enjoyed the Swamps. The whole Vasca situation was just funny. Um, it was hard to even take her and Gramps in there serious, but it was still very um, interesting because she had this whole different religion going on and like she was worshipping the Broodmother there, but it was obviously the, uh, the Volgenoi and such. But it was really interesting. The whole second chapter was cool. Uh, and that's when we obviously sided with the school. So again... I just didn't see the um, heel inside him with the order for some reason at that point of time. Obviously, we know that I roleplayed Geralt to where I wanted to uh, help his friends. And obviously, most of his friends are non-human. And we're going to keep on that path of uh, helping his friends more than just picking a side. Now, I will see how, obviously, Witcher 2 goes once we actually get to it. But then we had the third chapter. The third chapter is when we kind of wake up from the fight in the swamps and then obviously Triss is there talking in that mirror which is still bugging me who that person was I, I think it's Philippa Alhart it's gotta be obviously Philippa's not a blonde so it just doesn't make sense for it to be anybody else it could be somebody in Nilfgaard it could even have been Yennefer for all we know I don't know like we have no idea and that was a little shady to me but in the end it feel, I feel like yes Triss played a too big of a role to be... Triss played a big role, but not a big role. That makes sense. Like, I, I expected more from Triss, definitely at the end. And I think if you go neutral, Triss is the one that actually is with you the whole time. So you get more of her if you go down a neutral path. But... Definitely expected... Don't know if I expected her to do anything shady after that it was up in the air i kind of felt like she was but then again i think it was just her nature of being secretive to protect Geralt because she really really loves Geralt. like it's crazy but this game is really pushing the whole love thing between tris and Geralt. and honestly i'm kind of on board a little bit with tris right now more than when i was before kind of went into this game thinking i'm not going to romance anyone if there's a romance option unless it's yennefer and now Whenever Yennefer comes in, it's kind of kind of going to put a vice grip between the uh, two. I don't really know which one to pick. I know that sounds weird because I'm pro Yennefer, but I really enjoyed Triss's character in this game. She was awesome. She was definitely one of my favorite characters besides like Vincent and Tyler. Like Vincent and Tyler was just super cool. Vincent had the best story arc in the game. Tyler was amazing in the second act. This guy he just had so much fun with him. Third act, he kind of fell off a little bit, but them two characters and Triss was really, really good. Sad thing that Shani didn't... She really didn't live up to what I thought it was going to end up being, but she still was an interesting character and she was sweet and I'm happy we were able to help her at least too. 
And then when we have Triss here, we have the whole situation with Alvin, which was interesting now that we know it hasn't even been confirmed that Jock de Alderberg is Alvin. I don't even know if... I have no idea if that really is him or not. But I'm pretty sure it probably is him. Why would they put the ammo there if it wasn't? And then the whole thing with us doing a father figure thing to uh, to Alvin and then settling down with Triss. I thought it was really cool and unique. I didn't think that... Like, you look at it like... You're the Witcher and... You're all about uh, fighting monsters, this, that, and the other. But Geralt has such a personality, and they're like tr really trying to push Geralt into uh, making a stable personality for himself because he lost his memory. But not only that, he seems so the word is for Geralt. Geralt just seems so lively compared to other Witchers, I guess. Other Witchers are really tranquil in their motions and stuff. Geralt just seems a bit more. I know he has his, uh, he don't really talk much, obviously, and he has his moments when, when he does talk, you really should heed his words, you know? But Geralt has his moments of, um, the dry humor such, and that's his part of being a witcher, but Geralt, just his emotions are just there, and the game's showing it. And it's interesting because when you look at a game, like an RPG, and you want to roleplay the character, it's very hard to roleplay a character that's already pre-made for you. But one thing I can say about this game is that they made Geralt feel like he's your character. Like you created him. And that's a great thing. Considering the um, they made the character for you. And that's I really did uh, enjoy that. And then the rest of the stuff in the third act, we have the Atta situation, the party. That was really interesting stuff. And then we find out about the Order. Being a little bit more shady, somebody's working with Salamandra, and then BAM. We almost end up getting the kiss of death there at the end, and Triss whisks us away, and then we go to the, uh... Whatever it is. Murky Waters, and that was a really cool place, man. It was a nice change of pace. Like, I enjoyed the second act and the third act, but I kind of started feeling like we needed a change of pace to get out of this whole politic stuff, and the whole search here, search there for Salamandra, like I wanted to get to something new. And definitely the outskirts, or not the outskirts, the uh, Murky Waters delivered on that. The Murky Waters felt like... It all felt like a traditional witch request, I guess. Like I read the books and I really, like my favorite books obviously are... I like the earlier books when it's talking about, well the two, um short story books. I like them more than the novels because it's just Geralt and it's his backstories and it's a little involvement with the characters from the future books. Obviously Dandelion's there away, along the way. You got Yennefer here and there too. But just, I really enjoy them Witcher type um, stories and the Witcher type quests that make you really feel like you're a Witcher helping the common people and killing monsters and then dispelling curses here and there. Murky Waters was really cool. The whole lover spat thing was interesting, funny. I mean, it was to the point where it was just funny to me when they all just end up killing themselves. <laughs> I mean, that was terrible. But it was to the point when it was kind of funny. And then uh, Dandelion obviously uh, soothing the night, the night Wraith and the Noon Wraith with his loot was super cool. Scoyatel's environment there was alright. They were It was a small. We helped them. That was cool. And then the whole thing with the Lady of the Lake. Super interesting stuff. Her giving us a sword. Us killing Dagon. It was just really freaking awesome, man. That was a really cool chapter. It's probably one of my favorite ones. Oddly, besides the first one. I really enjoyed the first chapter for some reason. It just really sucked me in to The Witcher. And a lot of people said this, this game is slow. I didn't think the game was slow at all. But I look at stuff a lot different than other people. I don't care about graphics. I don't really care about combat. The only thing I really care about is story, the in-depthness of it, creating a world, role-playing the character if you can, if it's possible, and replayability. It's mostly the main things I care about in uh, the game. Obviously companions too, and the uh, people that you meet along the way. But yeah, Chapter 4 was awesome. Really enjoyed that one. The whole um, coming back and then you got Berengar there too, finally finding out his story. And then the whole thing with White Rayla. 
going after the school hotel and i knew that was going to happen eventually i knew the the order and the school hotel were finally going to come to a head and they were going to go to all-out war at this point kind of just felt like i wish we would have stayed out of it i wish we would have went down a neutral path and let bygones and let them just fight it out because it's really no part of a witcher being in that stuff but then again i felt like i was abandoning my friends because i made a pact with um myself and wanting to help the uh, non-humans because that's what I felt like my friends would have done. You know, Dandelion, Zoltan and such, but... And then, of course, we have Chapter 5, which was just... From the beginning to the end was just a, a bang, man. It was awesome. The whole, um... Dropping into old Vizima, going to the palace, talking to Foltest, whooping his ass for all that money with the dice. It was just ridiculous. Um... And then heading down to Old Vizima on the chase for the Striga. Like the people that we met in that chapter was not that many, but it was still impact. Like the whole chapter was impacted with such good story. And then the combat was, we'll talk about that in a second after all this, but. The whole story of the chapter five was just very mind blowing. Like we meet the Grand Master, obviously. And then DeWitt was the one all along um, that wanted to turn Ada into a Strega again. He used Ostra's journal. We found that. We dispelled the uh, curse again on Ada, which was awesome. Won a favor with Foltest, got to the old manor, whooped Azar's ass finally, and then you got Berengar there that helped us because of our decisions that we made in the past. And he survived, which is interesting because nothing ever came up about Berengar again so I wonder if we'll find more information about him or even see him again in the other games which would be really cool because some of the most memorable parts and it still is memorable in my mind was meeting the witchers at Kaer Morhen in the beginning like I absolutely love the allure of meeting other witchers and talking to other witchers so I hope along the way we just meet other witchers and obviously we'll go into the whole thing with Witcher 2 here shortly, but I don't know, Chapter 5 was really awesome, and then Yavin helping us there at the end, and then the whole um, Raven's armor thing was interesting, it was a nice little um, diversion treasure hunt type of thing, the armor was okay looking, but the armor was a huge help because at that point I was just spamming our abilities like crazy, but it was still a cool little um, hunt. And then the whole dentist thing led out all the way to there, the fist fighting thing, the poker thing, everything was just minor side stuff all the way through the game, which I thought was interesting. Each chapter, you felt like you had to just, um, man, I got to get this done because I don't know if it's going to lead to the next chapter. But all in all, some of them quests just ended up from the first chapter all the way to the end, which was really cool. And then we go to... We leave Azar Javed's uh, hideout, go down and fight a damn Zugul, of all things, in the sewers. Siegfried would have had a field day with that, sadly he wasn't alive, and we killed Siegfried again on the way there. Or the way back from there. Something like that. But that's just... Sucks, man. I just did not want to kill that guy. I wish he would have had a better, um... A better ending. Then we end up, you know, finally making it to the Grand Master and his crazy mutants that he's got going on here make it to the Grand Master and he puts us into a, a vision in his brain somehow of the future and the futures until the future is literally the uh, white frost comes and devours pretty much the whole world and he thinks the only thing that will survive is them skull head type things the uh, well the skull heads were not what he had but the skull heads were, were literally us and the only way that we would have survived if we turned humanity into these mutants intel somehow but not only that then we have the freaking king of the wild hunt and then you talk about the king of the wild hunt the king of the wild hunt came up in the first chapter which was super interesting and then now he's throughout the game he kind of people were talking about it but he didn't appear again to the end and the king of the wild hunt i guess the only thing I can think of here 
is that he wanted him somehow to use his ability. Because obviously that had to be Alvin, and he wants that source ability to uh, teleport from worlds. And in the books, you know, we know that he won a series so he, she can open up the gate of worlds. And uh, the NL elves can come over to um, our world because their world is dying still. And it's probably still dying still in the game. And that's obviously his, uh, his goal here. So the wild hunt is going to be an interesting one. I can't wait to see more about what the hell is going to happen with them. And like I said, I do know that Witcher 3 is called the wild hunt. So I'm, I have a feeling that it's going to lead up to the end. Probably. And then, yeah, he was just an interesting character, the King of the Wild Hunt. Um, I doubt he's really dead. We killed him in Jock's mind, and that could have just been the specter of him. I don't think that was actually uh, Aerodin. I think his name is in Sparrowhawk. That's his nickname. So I don't think that was actually him. But then we have... Jock, man. He was just an interesting character. Like, I couldn't tell if he was fully bad. It's like... It's like he couldn't see no other way besides that to try to save the future. But I wish there was another way for the guy. Wish he didn't go down that dark path because it is if it is Alvin, it's just shitty because we kind of put him on that path in a way somehow. But what was he ultimately doing in the future with his self that was from the past? I wonder what was his goal there? Was his goal to get with Geralt somehow? Try to... Like, parts of me thinks he was trying to warn Geralt because he knows the future and it seems like the future's tied up with Geralt and the White Frost. So I wonder if he was trying to prepare Geralt some way. I just don't know. But yeah, that's the, that. That was an interesting situation. It was an interesting end to the game, you know, with him wanting to uh, do the best he could for humanity by literally turning everyone into mutants and thinking that's the only way. That's just lunacy, but I don't know. This whole White Frost is definitely going to be something crazy, friends, and I'm just interested to see what the hell is that, that's going to be about in the, in the future. And then, obviously, killing the King of the Wild Hunt, not giving Alvin or Jock over to him. And then, of course, we get out of the dream, and then there's the amulet. Dandelions, you know, talking to us about the future, this, that, and the other. And then we have Foltest. The whole ending um, with Foltest. And before we get to the ending with the him trying to get assassinated, they have the uh, credits with, you know, Yevon obviously gained fame or whatever. He's a very uh, powerful elf now, even if not before he was powerful. But it seems that the non-humans are still going to get prosecuted. Because it didn't seem like it really changed anything. It seemed like they were still going through their hardship. And it literally didn't give them equal rights at all. So it's almost like why did we even help them? We should have just stayed neutral, friends. You know? So I guess that's that. And then... Foltest being trying to be assassinated there. That's another Witcher that was trying to do that. And obviously we do know that Witcher 2 is called Assassins of Kings. And at the end of this video, I will be showing a um, trailer that's opening. That's going to pave the way for us into Witcher 2. Obviously, you know, we're not done with the DLCs first. The DLCs in Witcher 1, so we're going to need to do that. But... The DLCs kind of take place in the past. It doesn't have anything to do with the end or anything to do with the future. I mean, they're really not even a necessity to do. But I'm just going to do them because CD Projekt made them. Let's just put them on the channel. But it's interesting because I wonder who the hell that assassin was. If it, obviously, it was a witcher. But I don't think it was a wolf school witcher. It was probably another one of the schools. That we just don't know about who it is yet. And I'm obviously wondering if... I'm hoping that it's not a whole entail of politics. And king tight stuff going into the next game with um, witchers and stuff. I guess we'll see fully what it's going to be about. Because you guys know I want to get on that witcher, that witcher path, literally. And the feel. And I don't want to be brought into crazy politics again but they may do it in a great way and we may still be able to get on that witcher's path fully so 
I'm really just excited to uh, do it in general, but I don't know. That was this the recap of the game, and the high and lows of this game was obviously the quest, the companions, um, the story. The lows, I think the combat was probably... I thought the combat was fun, and it's not even about me griping about the combat in general, because I actually thought it was fun. But the only thing I'm griping about is the boss fights, the just fights in general. I know I could have put it up to hard difficulty, but what from what I'm aware is that the hard difficulty is literally the same as medium, but it gets rid of the reticle that we can see to chain our, our uh, attacks. I don't really care about that, and that, that shit will just make me motion sickness, and it just... Uh, to me, that doesn't seem like it's skills to make it hard just to sit there and stare at Geralt's backside to watch the sword light up. It's just... I, I don't care about that. Like, I wanted the combat a little bit more harder, and I feel like the second and third one probably will give us that. And I hope the, um... The whole potion situation is still in effect, because that is super cool, man. I hope we're able to do more, more in the builds and such in the next one. Because the builds in this one was kind of just like pick anything, just pick Ard, and anything else was just there, kind of. It wasn't fully like uh, strategizing about builds and such going into the game. Like you really didn't, it, the, like the alchemy was useful, and the combat itself was just kind of there. It was fun though. I loved knocking people the hell out with Ard. That shit was amazing, friends. Oh my god. Sometimes I just lost my voice by going booyah, baby. Over and over and over. But that was pretty much the highs and lows of it. Anything else, like I don't really have anything bad to say about the game. Besides the combat, I wish it was a little bit tougher. And then there's just so many good things to say. The game was just old. It was an old game and I really just wish new games today can take advice from games like this because this game was made from the heart. You can really tell that they made this game from the heart and then most games today really just uh, all they care about is damn graphics and it's not just most games. People are so spoiled nowadays when it comes to graphics and such. Some games are completely destroyed because of the facial animations just aren't there but the story itself was probably amazing. People just need to get off the uh, whole graphics such and they need to just look at the games for what they are lower your expectations a little bit look at the games for what they are and enjoy the story and characters because that's what makes these games these these games are amazing most of these games but sadly the whole animations thing and graphics and such that's just the era we live in friends but I'm sure the old animations and graphics and such in Witcher 2 and 3 are amazing from what I'm hearing. So just looking forward to it. I cannot wait to uh, open the next chapter of Geralt's story and see where that goes. Um, I think that's pretty much it I wanted to discuss. Now I would like to do this with each game. Um, it's going to be hard for me to do this with obviously games I've played before because... It's just easier to do with blind games because blind games have such an effect on you because you after you just beat a blind game for the first time, you're kind of just on a high for like a week or so because the game was so amazing or the game was bad, this, that, and the other. But it's going to be a nice little thing to talk about, sit here and reflect, you know, about all the great things that happen in the game. Let's call it After Action Report, AAR. Sit back, grab a beer, chill, discuss this stuff. If you don't drink beer, I don't know, drink a coffee, chocolate milk, whatever the hell you drink. Orange juice, I don't know. Let's sit back and just chill and talk about this stuff. But what I'm going to do now is we're going to go ahead and I'm going to play the Witcher 2 trailer. I think it's called the World trailer. It kind of just paves the way for um, Witcher 2 when we actually get to it. I don't believe it's anything with spoilers, so... Obviously, it's going to be it's going to be something that's going to pay the way for us and let us know kind of what's happening. So all we know at this point is literally the name of the game. And we know that full test was. Uh, full test survived an assassination by a witcher. So let's go ahead and just fast forward and watch the trailer, shall we? Leave us? Yes, Your Excellency. The Northern Kingdoms. A lovely map. 
One that I fear will soon need to be redrawn. To what do I owe this invitation from Nilfgaard's senior ambassador? The war ended long ago. At Brenner, the realms united their forces to halt cruel Nilfgaard's northward expansion. You were all so elated at the victory, though only briefly. Without a common foe, the coalition began to uh, disintegrate. Ah, oh, times have changed. Where is the old alliance? What have you done with your victory? Radovid rules Redania. Who does he await that he gathers his armies in the Rex fortresses? So young and impetuous, yet he wields great power. He can only hope that his errors do not prove to be grave ones. His neighbor to the east, Henselt, slaughters non-humans to gain respect. He must content himself with its cheap imitation. Fear. All the while submitting to the whispered counsel of his sorcerer advisor, Deathmold. He ventures south yet again to conquer, pillage, and murder. Who this time? His ally from Brenner. A failure of a king who secludes himself from the world so as not to see the contempt in his subjects' eyes. A failure on whose door they will soon knock and... Finally, faultest of Temeria. Dangerous at war and pitiless in politics. A true northern monarch. Not to be brought down by rebelling non-humans, nor by the scheming order of the Flaming Rose. Miraculously saved by you, of all people, during an attempt on his life. But a troubled king, nonetheless. A few passionate nights with a nobleman's wife. Nature took its course and there surfaced a problem. Or more precisely, two problems. Now in the hands of their mother, the Baroness Lavalette. Faltest has assembled thousands of devoted soldiers for a crusade to recover his bastard children. Personally, I find it incredibly romantic. Romantic, though costly. Darkness gathers over the heads of four kings. Perhaps it is war. Perhaps a war greater than that with Nilfgaard. I suppose your excellency will now tell me what the future holds. No, Witcher. I sense you will tell me. Alright, now that was freaking cool, friends. First of all, I'm going to say the graphics look amazing. The arrow looks really good. You can really tell the uh, the emotions in uh, his face there at the end. That's awesome. Um, the situation with the four kings. So, Witcher 2 Assassin of Kings is the name. And then... It kind of showed us a little bit about the king's intel. So, I wonder... What the hell that's going to be about? Because we know that a Witcher tried to slay Foltest. And it seems... Okay, so Salamandra in the first game was something we were chasing the whole game, right? They stole the Witcher Seekers and we went from the beginning to the end of the game chasing and dealing with the Salamandra. I wonder in this one if we are going to be chasing renegade witchers maybe or something until or maybe it's kind of just trailer magic and it wants us to think that we're going to be doing that into the game and we're not so i'm not really sure how that's going to go but it's going to be interesting now we got full test with the two kids at the end trying to he's trying to recover his kids interesting because you have ada i wonder if ada have fallen out with full test or ada is dead at this point or Foltest in general because there was a looked like a girl and a boy unless Foltest wants the boy to be king I don't have a clue I'm not sure it's going to be very interesting and then Radovid looked a bit different 
I seen, obviously, I feel like that was Philip Alhart in the background with Radovid, which is going to be interesting, friends. Um, Radovid actually looked like a damn man this time. He looked like a little pleb in the first one. He looked like a man in this one. Um, then you got Hensold over here, over there, and they were talking about him really oppressing non-humans and such. That's not good. And then Edern's King, I can't remember his name, um... So Hensold's Kedwin's King, Radovid's obviously Virginia, Tamaria is Foltest, and then the other one is... God, I don't remember his name. It's really just eluding me, but anyways, his king, he seems to be pretty weak. Remember, um... The talks they had in the books. They had like a big meeting in the books at one point. They also uh, invited the Queen of Lyria and Rivia. What's her name? Meave? Which was interesting. Demavan, yeah, that's his name. He seemed to be an alright kinda ish king. He seemed really weak, but it looks like now he's locking himself away. And people are coming for him, perhaps. So yeah, this is not looking good, friends. I hope there's not a whole um I hope it's just not us slaying witchers the whole time. You know? And uh that's such because I don't really like killing witchers. I don't want to kill witchers. They're meant for a reason. They're meant in this world for a reason, you know? They're so, like, rare and, like, I just don't want to do it. But in, all in all, it looks interesting, to say the least. It looks very cool, like, I'm not even sure how it's going to start off. Don't even know where Geralt is at this point. We know that he was leaving Vizima, you know? So it's going to be really interesting to see what the hell is going to go on with the witchers. And these kings and whatnot. It's just going to be cool. Hopefully there is other stuff along the way. There is the whole witcher path I keep talking about. And I want to see more of the wild hunt. As well. Um, I obviously want more witcher contracts and stuff. Because I thought that was really cool in the first game. The whole witcher contracts and stuff. I hope they're a bit more updated though. With stories to them. And that would be really freaking awesome. Um, but let's rewind a little bit. I want to talk about one more thing before we head out, and that's the romance cards. I didn't talk about that in the our little AAR before the trailer, but that's something that I hope they fix too. That was a low of the game, I think. I, it was kind of fun at first. It was a little diversion. It was just funny to see Geralt in the situations, and then all of a sudden, boom, we're having sex with somebody. So hopefully that's updated in the second game. I don't really care for the romance cards. I want like a full-fledged romance um, for Geralt. I want to see a uh, story to it and hopefully they do that. That would be really cool. Um, and then people I'm hoping that's going to be in this game. I'm hoping to see Dandelion, obviously. Zoltan. Yaven would be cool. Um, obviously, we can't see the dead people. Talor would be awesome to see. Vincent. So hope to see we... Uh, I hope we can see a lot of people, and not just see a lot of people that we've seen in the past, but I would like to see some people, um, some new people as well. I'm just, I just can't wait to see when, uh, if and when Siri and Jennifer come in the mix. Um, there's still a bunch of names that I would like to see. Uh, there's a few characters in the books that aren't really around anymore that I just wish are just in the games. I would love to see Regis at some point in time, but I know in the in the books he... Pretty much is gone. Um, it would have been cool to see Milva again, but I don't think we'll see her because she is gone from the books as well. And then... I don't know. I would love to see the Witchers again too. Vesemir, uh, Lambert, Eskel. Would have been cool to see Kellen, but obviously we know he is gone. So I guess we'll see what happens, friends. The Witcher 1 was just one hell of an experience. I'm happy you all uh, stuck with me until the end. Now we have the uh, DLCs we're going to do. Probably won't really be that long. Expect a video pretty shortly about the DLCs. One of the DLCs we're going to do. We're going to do two of them. So that will be coming out. And then we will jump into The Witcher 2 as soon as I am able to. Like I said, we're going to clear some stuff off the channel first. And then we will... Um, make a move to jump into it because it's just going to be rough doing Dra Dragon Age and The Witcher in general at once is a bit rough. Yeah. So we'll just finish the games one by one 
and then move on from there. But other than that, it's just, man, it was one hell of a ride. I'm just sad. I'm honestly literally sad that the game is over, and I literally just want to play the second game so bad right now. I cannot wait to play the second game. I just want to jump right into it because I already missed Geralt. Already missed the characters, man. And I just can't wait to see uh, the new improved graphics. Um, like, I just... I more or less don't care about the graphics fully. I kind of just want to see Geralt in the new graphics because that ending there just felt really cool with seeing his emotions. Like, I can't wait to see how they play the emotions out. Like I said, I don't really care about the graphics in general, but it would be cool. It's going to be really cool to see his emotions and him talking from that that character that they made. It's, he looks obviously a little bit different, but yeah. Looking forward to it, friends. Cannot wait to jump into it. Anyways, I'm done blabbing. Been going on for too long. As always, stay safe. Have a good one out there. Until next time, see you guys then. Have a good one, friends.